It's always fun to visit with a gardener who's absolutely in love with her garden. So thanks for sharing your garden with us. Now we're going to turn our attention to everybody's favorite herb. I'm talking about the stinking rose, also known as garlic. Uh, one of the great plants to grow in your vegetable garden or garden uh, patch, wherever, whatever kind of garden you have. And joining me to talk about growing garlic in Central Texas is Sam Slaughter from Gabriel Valley Farms. It's great to have you with us. Nice to be here. Well, garlic is, uh, I think, probably the most useful of all the culinary herbs. Uh, but a lot of people are intimidated about growing it. Should they be in Central Texas? No, not at all. We're kind of on the southern end of the best garlic growing country, if you will. A lot of it's grown up north and mm -hmm. on the west coast and whatever. But uh, we can do a real adequate job if you pick the right varieties and okay. the right types. Okay. Well, we're going to talk all about the types, which I'm really interested in learning because I always love to use fresh garlic uh, whenever I cook. Um, but uh, we're going to give people the basic information about how to plant this, uh, this wonderful plant and, and, and also how to know when it's ready, how to take care of it when it's growing, all those things. Now, let's start with the soil, which is always a good place to start. Now, what's the, the appropriate garden soil for the, the garlics we'll be talking about? I think here, uh, pretty much, garlic's very forgiving, but it likes compost and it likes average garden soil. So I think if you have a good, good uh, garden soil already, but it's always nice to, before you plant, incorporate a little bit more compost, I mm -hmm. think, and a little more on the... Um, Woody side. Uh, yeah, we were talking good. about this. This is real interesting. You think there's a, there's a real kind of microbial or fungal uh, kind of synchronicity yeah. uh, that benefits uh, the garlic if you use a woody compost. It also it seems to be sort of symbiotic and, and just really helps all bulbing plants, onions, all the uh, alliums. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've really had some nice success with uh, a little more. A little more bark in the, okay. in the compost. Okay, well that's a really wise tip. So you, uh, 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 composty, woody compost mm -hmm. soil, mm -hmm. uh, otherwise average guard soil really for a lot of these is going to be pretty adequate. Yes. Uh, obviously sun, sun, sun. Full sun. Full sun. Uh, right. Yeah. So uh, no partial shade here for, right. the, for the garlics if you really want them to grow well. Right. And what about uh, the, the time to plant? Well, uh, it's, it's an excellent... Down here in the south, we're much different than, say, in the northern half of the country. Uh, our garlic grows all winter long. Mm -hmm. So for opposite reasons, we still plant at the same time that they do up north. But mid-October is ideal. Now down here, we have a little more um, flexibility. It can go into as late as early December. Mm -hmm. I've had my best luck, though, right at mid-October. Okay. What you're trying to do is catch the soil temperature going heading down Right. Down in temperature, cooling, down. cooling right. down a little bit, and the moisture, you know, not being so uh, difficult. Actually, the other day I was just out in my garden cleaning it up a little bit, and I noticed some garlic that I probably missed or whatever, actually trying to come up now as hot as it is. Mm -hmm. So it will do that, but it prefers and will do much better about mid-October when it's cooler. So people have time to prepare the soil for the garlic right now. Absolutely. And one thing that we were talking about is uh, pr prior to getting started with the taping here is you, you said that uh, adding some fertilizer in advance is a good idea as I, well. I think so, unless you feel like that your garden soil is just A plus and really good. Uh, all the alliums, no matter what you're growing, uh, like a, a little bit of nitrogen and a little bit more than maybe average, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't like hot shots of it. So what I like to do is incorporate a little 824 or, mm -hmm. or something similar All right. and uh, maybe a, about a month before you plant. Right. So about mid-September and then, so you know, I like to do my compost and then while I'm doing that, throw a little mm -hmm. fertilizer in mix. and. Uh, uh, then what you're doing is is letting that break down a little bit and kind of mellow the soil or what mellow Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think it's one of the wisest things. It's, you know, I, and there's an analogy of thinking about cooking. You want the ingredients to be together for a while, exactly. you know, and exactly. <laughs> meld a little bit. Right. Yeah. You want, you want all, it all to be ready for the garlic when you plant it. Yes. Now, uh, speaking about how to plant, you've brought some of uh, uh, different varieties here. We'll be talking about the varieties in a bit. But people always want to know uh, how to plant the garlic. And we have here a, a clove, and this is a variety that you call a creole type. 
And I have to say, it's a really beautiful, symmetrical little uh, 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 clove here. I've never seen anything quite like it, I don't think, in the, from a grocery store, certainly. But we're going to show people how to do it. Now, you don't plant the whole thing, do you, Sam? No. Actually, the whole, the whole thing is a series of cloves uh, to make a bulb or a right. head. And so what you want to do is you want to take one of those like just segments, like that, right? just like that, yeah. and you plant the fat end where the little basal plate is, you right. plant that down. What you usually cut off if you're chopping it up. Right, right, right. Okay. exactly. That, that goes, that goes down. Mm -hmm. Now, how far down is a good question to okay. ask. Okay, I, I, what I do is I take a little dibbler, if you will, or a stick or something, mm -hmm. and I punch a little hole, and it needs to be two inches deep. Okay. And you drop that right down in the in the hole. And basically this will turn into this. Exactly. So uh, it's always good to hang on to, if you have a favorite variety that's really performed for you, hang on to a few. Uh, yeah, you need to hold on to about 10%. Okay. And then that, that gets you next year, so you, you got about the same amount. If you want to increase okay. more, of course, you got to have more. So so uh, that we've got the right depth, yep. the right time. Let's mm -hmm. talk about water. Okay. Uh, water, um, I think you need about an inch a week if you're not getting rains. Now, and it, during the winter time, sometimes <laughs> Do you remember uh, I, I, I've not getting rain. rain. <laughs> I've heard of rain. I don't know what it is, but uh, I some winters will have drizzly or cloudy right. weather, so you have to amend that. Mm -hmm. Last year we didn't have much rain, so I, I tested it a little bit. Mm -hmm. I did the old uh, tuna fish can in the garden, you know, right. and measured the amount there of rain, water, and uh, about an inch a week seemed to be ideal. Okay. And they, you can just tell how they're growing and whatever, mm -hmm. but they will actively grow all winter long. And uh, so okay. you can kind of tell. It's Real briefly here, how do people know when the garlic's ready to pick? That's an important, or to harvest. Yeah, it, well, what'll happen is they'll send up a bloom scape or mm -hmm. bloom stalk, and then you want to cut that off so that you, it doesn't put all of its energy into that. Mm -hmm. And then that's going to tip you that it's getting close to time. Okay. Probably about three or four more weeks. Some, it's, it's changes with varieties. Sure. But uh, they'll start from the bottom. It will start going up. The uh, leaves will turn yellow and then brown. Okay. And when about halfway up the, the length, so about, about half of the foliage okay. will go. And it's time to dig. Okay, so varieties, and we have to be real quick here. Okay, Sam. You, you mentioned the Creole varieties are ones that you really like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, there's one, uh, and the artichoke types are the kinds that we typically see in the store, but there's a, a particular variety there that you're really big on. I like, I really like Laura's Italian. I've tried different ones, and most of them are pretty not very exciting or whatever. The Lord's Italian is really nice. Uh -huh. really and, and then there's another one called Turban. Turban types. And <laughs> they seem to all work here. They size out nicely. Okay. They're very, very early. So what you do is you get your your uh, early crop and then you get your... All right. And, and, and all crop. the varieties we just talked about, mm -hmm. you say, have a strong, complex flavor. Yes. All yes. right. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sam, that's all fantastic information. I think I smell a lot of stinking roses coming up here yes, in Central sir. Texas yes, this sir. spring. Very good. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Thanks for being back on the show. All right. Okay. And now it's time for our friend Daphne. Mm -hmm.